we had a strong performance from our operations that didn't pass any uh, uh, year, uh, mainly because of the inclusion of IBR, but we also had strong performance from our key asset, Rustenberg, we have seen a 4% improvement year on year, Zimplet 6%, we also have seen 5%, 4% from Mimosa. And Canada, despite us changing our operating strategy uh, in response to the low palladium price, they've actually also performed very well. Uh, the unit cost uh, below the inflation of 5.6%, primarily also driven by good production, and also the cost cutting that we've done uh, during the course of the year as a response to low uh, platinum prices. Uh, capital uh, mostly is because we've now included uh, IBR and also our expansion capital, mainly from Zim. Uh, during this year, we've also completed our key project. Uh, all our three fenders in Rostenberg, they've all, all been rebuilt, which comes in handy to work down uh, the work in progress uh, stocks that, that we have. We have completed 35 uh, megawatt solar uh, project in Zimplex. Uh, we've also now uh, completed our 38 megawatts fenders in Zimplex. We should be uh, bringing it online now in October. So, and also lastly, we have seen us completing the BMR debotaining project that will give us about 10% uh, more capacity. So, uh, very, very uh, disciplined executive of our project uh, in this year. So, we also see improvement uh, uh, for this year at uh, Marula uh, and Star Drift. Uh, let, me, let me know for now, talk about Marula. So, Marula did not perform up to expectation, mainly because we have encountered uh, difficult geology that actually decimated our face land. We have plans in place to restore that face land. I'll touch uh, on stale drift uh, in the following slide. Stale drift, it is still very key to our success and future uh, at the Western Limb. I, I'm, very, I'm particularly pleased with where we ended up on the balance sheet. We ended the year with strong adjusted net cash with only one billion rand worth of, uh, Nico calls it real debt. <laughs> um, and that was largely on, uh, you know, Zimplatz drawing down to fund its, uh, its peak uh, capital funding requirements. But also more importantly, 17.7 billion of liquidity headroom. Um, so when I look forward into FY 2025, I certainly think the company is going to benefit from the labor rationalization or restructuring that we did uh, which underpins our commitment to controlling costs. Secondly, reduce capital intensity. This is because of decisions we made around the portfolio around uh, Impala Canada and Marula, where we adjusted production and project plans. But also given that most of our operations are through the peak funding of expansion and replacement projects. Um, I mean, Patrick talked about our expanded processing capacity. I'm very pleased with that because that now gives us the opportunity to basically systematically work through the 390,000 ounces of excess inventory that we've built up over the last three years as we've rebuilt our Rustenburg furnaces. This cash should, this, 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 the unlock of the stock should support free cash flow generation and more importantly, protect the balance sheet. Um, I think all of this actually positions the company well to navigate through and provides it with the flexibility to navigate through a period of uh, low pricing environment. We see the markets in, certainly for the next year or two, in, 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 in deficits. However, we are also aware that the prices of PGMs are not determined purely by market dynamics. There's also the global economy, global sentiment. We see persistent high interest rates it has a negative bearing on sentiment. And so if you want to think about how do you divide your attention to respond to that, on the right hand side, if you just look at the, the elements, the company is really focused on a, a defensive part, a posture, it's strengthening the internal business. So our attention predominantly is not an M&A and growth and, and all of the, the, the wonderful things that we do when we are in, in a super profit cycle. It is about making sure that we can strengthen ourselves to the point where we can remain successful even at current spot, which for our company is around 24,000 rand an, an, an ounce. Um, we are cautiously optimistic that there may, may be price support. We have seen some 
indication, some signals that interest rates may start to be lowered late in the year, certainly in the US, and that may be followed in other jurisdictions as well. One of the things that I think the company did particularly well is cost leadership. We, I mean, our, if you, so if you exclude RB Platts, integration as a company, our unit cost went up by 3%. Uh, you know, and that's below mining inflation, it's below below inflation. On top of that, we made changes, we restructured the labor, so that's going to assist us you, when we get to the guidance later on. We'll see we're also guiding a 3% unit cost increase for, for next year. And so I, I want to thank the team for, for assisting us in the commodity industry. You have to get, you have to compete on unit cost, and that's one of the things that I think we, we done, we've done particularly well. So the group, the group production, you see, uh, we are uh, we are guiding between three uh, three three thousand five, uh, well three point five and three point seven million ounces, and that's broadly in line with what we achieved in the past financial year. But if you look internally, there are a few a few changes. There are two operations where we are forecasting an improvement, um, and the one is Buffalo King. So if you look at, we achieved 483 and the other, so we are guiding 490 to 530. And that is as a consequence of our uh, assurance that we are engaging with the process. I mean, as I said earlier, we want that operation to grow to around 650 in financial 2027. So we are confident that we are going to increase production during this coming year. And the other one is Marula. As Patrick has mentioned, once we have dealt with the geological challenges that we've encountered, we re-established the, uh, the available working phase. We are guiding that to go up from 223 to between 230 and 250. But then there are two operations where we are, well, there are two areas where we are uh, guiding lower production. The one is Canada, if I can remember correctly. Well, I just, I can't see Canada. Yeah. Oh, Canada. Um, so it was 281 for this year, and we are guiding 250 to 270, and that's as a consequence of the change in strategy, where we are favoring higher profit ounces and foregoing some of the lower profit ounces, and, that, and that's uh, uh, in order, to, and we, we can see the positive results that the Canada has achieved as a consequence of that. And of course, then the last one is our third party treatment, IOS. And so what, the way we, we, uh, we, we guide on IRS is always based on the existing contracts. We had two contracts that lapsed in the past year. And so the guidance there purely is based on the existing contracts and the volumes associated with that. If you then look at refined production, so I'm gonna to go to the top now. Refined production, that is taking a step up. So I mean, there's two ways I look at ref refined production. First, refined production in relation to group production, and you always have processing losses, so it's always going to be a bit less. But you'll see that the, the guidance of 3.45 to 3.65 is higher than what we achieved th uh, this year. And in part, that is as a consequence of us uh, guiding uh, between 100 and 130,000 ounces of excess inventory, given the fact that we've got all three furnaces in, in, uh, in Rustenburg, plus the Zimplatz furnace kicking in, and so we will have excess inventory coming through as refined production. Group unit cost, I have spoken to earlier. If you take the 21,000 uh, 21, to 22,000, the midpoint, that's 21,500. That is essentially 3% higher than the 20,922 that we achieved this year. And then the, <coughs> the capital expenditure is going to decline from, around, from 14 billion to between eight and nine billion. And also for the next few years, we are estimating capital to remain steady at between eight and nine billion.